What's happening, friends? This is a lunchtime meta sound. Spent my lunch break making a meta sound instead of eating a salad. Getting my daily nutritional value of meta sounds. Uh, I wanted to see if I could make. There's this. There's this synth module called Little Melody. Maybe you heard of it. I forget. I think it's made by. Uh, Frequ frequency central. I I have to look it up. Freak. Yeah, I think it's it's a company made. It's called Frequency Central. Anyway, they make this thing called Little Melody, and it's kind of clever. the w The way that it works is it's a clock divider, and so let's say you've got like a clock that a clock divider set to two, you know, so every other clock basically, and every other clock it sets its setting value on or off on or off and um and then what it does is it actually has four of these set up and uh and then it sums the total values together and so you get is what is essential it's kind of like a little melody builder it's not it's not necessarily i mean it's sort of procedural in the sense that you're not like dictating the sequence of notes but it is somewhat predictable because you can sort of think in your mind you can like work out the the like the clock division um in your mind but anyway <laughs> so uh the you know so basically the way that it works like i said is you have these clock dividers and they flip-flop every time their clock division hits they flip-flop from adding to the total value or not that's just it it's very simple but when you have four of these together or more than you know a few more than a handful of these together um then you start to put together some interesting uh melodies and the reason um what's cool is that uh you know there is a sort of repetition that happens right but it's because it's clock divide division oriented, um, you know, it's it's possible where you have this repetition. Um, could have very long phases, right? So you could potentially give get like really long melodies out of it, um, if you have like long divisions um, that don't sort of match up ni nicely. Uh, if I were to sort of give you a very simple test uh so like here um i have a b c and d and the division value that so then this is basically what that means is the a is adding three is adding three to the output um every four or it's not right so like it go it takes four triggers and then it adds three to the output for four more triggers and then it stops adding three to the output for four more triggers and, this, and so on and so forth and if you give each of your little dividers different um you know little clock dividers different values then they start to string together uh, a sequence of uh values that add or in this case subtract uh i don't i think they're only additive on the um on the uh, synth module, but uh, you know, it's integers we can subtract. So if I were to um, make this uh, very, s oh, and then I also have a little procedural rhythm generator here, but uh, using the trigger filter, but I can bypass that. Boop. Um, by doing this Boop. like that. And that should bypass the the uh, rhythm thing that I have going on, and this should still be good. And I'm just uh, this is this trigger counter is just resetting every thirty two. Uh, but if I play it, you know, 
know, if I if I were to make this a uh, simpler set, we could do like we'll add a uh, we'll add two. Which see these are semitones. We'll add two semitones every other, every two basically, and then um, we will add. Um, so this is a major second, and then we'll add a uh, we'll add a perfect fourth every four. And then we'll add um, a uh, perfect fifth every eight. And then um, every 16, uh, we'll add an octave. So this will be very simple. And, and it'll actually be kind of boring. Um, and actually, let me also take away this counter. So it just doesn't have ever reset. So you've got to get a set sense of um, of the the sort of generate the melody that it generates. So it starts to sound like a countdown, or like a little a little drop. Um, because we're sort of recognizing that the uh, the uh, six every sixteen turning on as uh, that octave as like the start of the phase or something like that, but um, this is where you know because it's clock dividers. This is where we can give them more interesting uh, values. You know, we could say three every three instead of every other one, right? And just changing that. Yeah, you get some movement up and down, a little more saw, sawing movement. You know, and then we could do some another odd uh, value, right? Like that. So it's what what's cool is that. Uh, because it has this sort of uh, uh, you know additive approach, it, it, you're basically getting very very typical. That's basically a interesting um, treatise on how melodies are constructed, right? So this is basically a, a, a critique, maybe, <laughs> on how simple melodies are constructed, right? And so it, it, it becomes a little generator. For building these, and you don't have to think about the melody when you're plugging in these values, you know, it it does help to plug in values that you know are going to be like. Sorry, right now I've everything's very consonant. All the additives that I've added here are consonant values, like the major second, the perfect fourth, the perfect fifth, the octave. But I could add, um, you know, some interest with this minor second. Um, and then I could uh, add some additional interest by adding a by by pr uh, putting in a uh, subtractive value, right? What if we did a uh, minus uh, major second? interesting a little more drama right because we've got those minors coming in and that minus um you know that inverted uh, major second right is going to give us that sort of minor feeling um and so uh and then of course um we it's just endless sort of tweak tweakables which is fun to play with um and then and then we can also uh quantize uh, the output, if we wanted to, um, let's do, we could do a, uh, quantize, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. scale to note. So let's say, um, 
that like that. I think that should work. So now it'll snap the values to a major scale. Um, what I also find about interesting about this sort of me little melody is that it could also be used to generate a root note. Um, and so, uh, uh, which maybe I'll, I'll play with in some other video. But uh, I, I just thought that would be an interesting one to throw out. Let's do this minor. This is Dorian. Um, let's do... Yeah, minor pentatonic. There we go. Of course, because we're we're quantizing, uh, we're not getting as much interest in terms of the movement, right? Because we're snapping to near values, uh, which means you know if we're in between, we could be snapping to the same value. But I I, I think this is interesting uh, to play around with. And anyway. Let's take a look at, oh, also, this is just very simple. This is just a saw way with a ladder filter and an envelope, a couple of envelopes. Stereo delay for interest. A repeater, that's just giving me 16th notes at 120 BPM. So let's take a look at this. Uh, and what I like about this is it's taking advantage of composition, what we call composition. Um, and the reason it does this is because I started building the logic for in incrementing the clock, you know, doing the clock divider, and then whenever the clock divider, starting at zero, starting at like not the value, and then adding the value every time the clock divider reset, basically, right? Um, when I started building that logic, I was like, wow, I do not want to do this four times in a single graph. <laughs> so I made a uh, meta sound. Remember, not all your meta sounds have to be sources. They can be custom graphs. So if you go to your, you know, sounds and then meta sound, you see this meta sound. This one is not, it doesn't have outputs. It's not meant to be played as a source. It's not a meta sound source. It's a meta sound. And so um, both of these, this little melody test, right? This doesn't output audio. Uh, if we look at my, you know, this outputs, it takes in triggers and a bunch of integers and it spits out a trigger and an integer, right? And then each one of these, um, this is just duplicated, right? All the way down, which is cool because now it's easy for me to add a fifth one or a sixth one or a seventh one and make even more complicated melodies, right? And uh, if we take a look at this logic, it's uh, not too complicated. Um, Basically, uh, on the next trigger, I, w I know I want to increment my clock value, right? So I take uh, a value that's sort of a, a local variable, its last value, which should default to zero. I add one to it, and then I take the modulus of whatever our divider is. And I just have this little protector on it because if the divider is zero, then we're dividing by zero and obviously dividing by zero is a no-no. <laughs> so I basically uh, clamp I, the value to one by using this max node, right? So the if the divider value is two, then it'll take the maximum between two and one. If the divider is zero, it'll take the maximum between zero and one. So the divider will always be one <laughs> at the very minimum. And then uh, modulus, remember, gives us the remainder. So um, <clears throat> when, uh, when we have a value in here, uh, let's say it's, you know, zero, one, two, et cetera, um, as long as it's not the same as our divider, then we have a remainder. So then the target value um, is is uh, set. We, we cache it to the value, uh, the local variable, but then we also compare it. Hey, let's compare it to zero. If our remainder is zero, that means we have hit our reset point. And if we've hit our reset point, um, then we want to flip a little bool that says, hey, are we adding the value or are we not adding the value? And every time we hit that reset point, we want to flip it from one 
value to the other value. We just flip flop between those. So I'm using a trigger sequence and I'm just flip flopping between false and true. And then I cache that, uh, val that value so that I can reference it next time. Because all the times that we're not, we just skip the flip flop part and we go straight to comparing, hey, are we adding the value or not? And if we're adding the value, then we route our settings to the output or we route zero to the output. And then we say, we communicate, hey, the, the note has been selected. And then all of them select their notes and it goes to the trigger accumulate here. And then this says, hey, I've selected my note, which means I've summed all my notes to all four of my notes together to my output. And then it comes out here as a note. And that's how it works. Very, very simple. Um, and so uh, this is just, you know, I was inspired by, I love to look, I really like modular synthesis. I don't have the little melody module. I've been thinking about it. I've been thinking about buying it. But I was like, hey, I wonder if I could recreate this and uh, and like sort of play around with it and see if I like it, you know? And so I think, you know, I do, and I do like it. I think it, it creates some interesting things. What I like is being able to reset it. This is what I had uh, before where the trigger would uh, reset it. And then, um, and then I could set like, you know, 16 or something like that and get some sort of shorter repeating pattern, you know. But it is also interesting to listen to the sort of elongated, you know, version. Uh, because these clock dividers don't line up necessarily all the time. Like, you know, there's, a, there's a, a third, there's a fifth, every three, every eight, every 16. And so you get these interesting phases where sometimes it's adding one, sometimes it's adding five, sometimes it's adding seven, etc. <laughs> so anyway, um, you know, we we talk about d doing randomization in Cedar randomization, but there's other ways to sort of generate um, melodies. Uh, so uh, this would be a fun one to show off and play around with and, and see if I can make on my lunch hour. All right. Hope you thought I was thought it was interesting, too. Thanks for checking it out. See you later.